Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 50 of our WWE 2021 save in TW 2020. This is Raw for October week three. And yes, a landmark episode number 50. And uh, when I was doing my booking and planning and all that, I started to look at it. I was like, wait a second, this is going to be episode 50 with our week three October Raw. And so we built it up that way to make sure it was a special and what I think will be an unforgettable show. So, without any further teases, let's get into it, because there's a lot to get to in this episode. We start with the pre-show here. Angelo Dawkins gets the win over Dijak, 647 with the powerbomb, 55 overall. But the most notable thing here is that our trend of finding good chemistry continues. Dawkins and Dijak, great chemistry. Uh, so, that is something we can use uh, if we ever need to. I don't really have any plans right now for a dawkins Dijak feud, but... Should we ever get there with these two, uh, at least we know that they do have great chemistry. So that continues that trend. Of course, we had the Ricochet Jeff trend uh, with chemistry on SmackDown. I think on the previous Raw, too, we had some good chemistry uh, somewhere. But uh, that is at least notable, so we, we can use that moving forward. All right, let's jump in to this mega episode of Raw. And we're going to start in a very unusual way for my episodes, because as you know, I like my angles. Uh, and you'll see plenty of them on this, this show. But... We're actually going to start things off with a match, and let's see who that is. And we start in a nice way here. 81 overall, Daniel Bryan gets the win over Dolph Ziggler, 12-18, using the submission with a label lock. Uh, so I'll take that, 81 overall, uh, to start a show. Uh, so as we see here, Bryan with a 90, uh, Ziggler with a 56. I mean, we kind of know where Ziggler's slotted now. But, um, yeah, this is a nice way to open up the show. I don't... I think at this point, I pretty much expect every Daniel Bryan match to hit that 80 mark, so I'm going to be perfectly pleased with an 81 here uh, with this. But we needed to start with a match because uh, it was going to lead into something after that, and that is Steve Austin telling Daniel Bryan after his match, Bryan comes to the back, and Austin tells Bryan that he needs him to leave the arena. Crowd not too happy about this, uh, but Austin says, he doesn't want Daniel Bryan interfering in the main event. Austin said he's already taken care of people that he thinks are going to get a little too involved in this main event. He sent the Lucha Brothers home, the Mysterios are sent home, and now he needs to send Daniel Bryan home as well because he's banned Randy Orton, he's banned Sheamus. There will be no one, he says, interfering during the main event of Raw uh, because he is laying down the law and he knows that Daniel Bryan has revenge on his mind. So while it won't be a popular decision, it's the decision Austin says he has to make for the sake of this main event. And so he's sending Daniel Bryan home. Of course, we've kind of teased Daniel Bryan, saying that he will not stop until he gets his revenge on edge. And so Austin seemingly going to prevent that here. Uh, by sending Daniel Bryan home, along with a host of others uh, in this. Like we said, the Lucha Brothers, the Mysterios, and now Daniel Bryan. So Austin really trying to set up a main event here uh, that's going to be between two people, Edge and Cesaro, and no one else. So that is noteworthy heading into our main event a little later on. And then it's Becky Lynch, uh, who says that uh, everyone's been asking, when is she going to get her title shot that she rightfully earned at Unforgiven when she beat Sasha Banks. And Becky says that uh, right now she's just waiting back knowing that she is the number one contender. She's the man, and she's just going to let things play out with Becky or with uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks before the title match because as Becky's been sort of, you know, poking and teasing over the past couple weeks, she knows that these two are about to implode. And so she's just going to sit back and enjoy the show. Uh, so Becky sort of you know, saying that she's in no hurry to get her championship match because she knows that she is the number one contender and that there are issues between Bailey and Sasha Banks. So uh, Becky, 70 overall, this probably would have done much better. My guess is because it was short. Yes, and that is correct. And that is something we just had to sort of do in a lot of this. And you'll see why later because Pretty much the entire, we're, we're splitting this up as though the entire second hour of this show is built around the main event. Um, so take that for what it is right now. We'll get to it in a second. But I had to make a lot of other things shorter than I usually do. Uh, so that's why Becky's promo here only gets a 70. She would have done much better uh, had I given this a little bit more time 
as I think we only gave it uh, three minutes, I want to say, probably on this. Yeah, three minutes here. So that is my guess uh, as to what, uh, why it got so low. But we're just going to take it for this episode because we don't really have a choice based on what we need to do with the second hour involving the, the main event. So, And then, <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to laugh here. A 33 overall. Oh, I told you guys that I was viewing this as a challenge. Well, this is going to be a challenge. Um, Omos gets the win over Akira Tozawa, 415, using the claw. Uh, Omos is actually not bad here at a 42 in ring performance when you consider that Tozawa is a 48. So it's getting better, uh, but it does cool the crowd a little bit. And, and I was willing to take, again, the, the hit on that too because we have to do this, and there's a reason why we're doing it. But if we look at the dirt sheet, uh, we kind of know where things are at with Omos right now. Uh, holding back, I made this storytelling, so I knew it was going to make the match a little bit worse than it was already going to be. That's my own fault, but we have to have a storytelling aim for at least one match on every show, and I made it this one because I didn't want it to take away from the other matches. Penalized for poor basics, inexperience, psychology, inconsistency. So Omos has got everything going against him right now, but my God, we have decided we are going to push this guy, and <laughs> we are going to make him a star, even if his matches are just a complete uh, mess right now. So that probably is going to drag down a little bit of the, the overall show rating. I don't think it's going to hurt it too bad uh, with what we got coming on, com- coming up later. But um, yeah, Omos gets the win here. This is essentially a squash match, uh, and it's going to lead to something after. But uh, Omos matches are going to be uh, few and far between, I will just tell you that right now, uh, based on uh, <laughs> what we're getting here out of this. Oh, goodness. All right. After the match, uh, this is really what the whole thing was about. Uh, of course, we teased it on SmackDown with uh, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, our tag team champions, telling Mick Foley that uh, they knew their next tag team title match was going to come on SmackDown, but first, they have something they need to take care of on Raw, and that is, of course, coming after Omos and MVP after Omos beat down Big E a couple weeks ago on Raw. And so, or maybe that was the last episode. I don't remember. I'm sorry. These, <laughs> these kind of run together sometimes. Uh, but uh, that is sort of New Day running in to run off Omos and MVP. Big E's still out. Uh, so that is kind of how we're playing this up with the storyline here. But uh, certainly like to have Omos in segments and not matches. Uh, and we'll see uh, how we adapt to that moving forward. But uh, there is the setup uh, for that. And now you know why, uh, which you probably already knew, why uh, Kingston and Woods uh, said they needed to go to Raw for a bit before their next title match. And then it is Bailey backstage with Sasha Banks. Uh, the tension, you can feel it through the screen. Uh, and Bailey says that she is tired of listening to Becky Lynch run her mouth about the tension between her and Sasha Banks. She says, it doesn't exist. There is none. She said, yes, they've made some mistakes. She's made some mistakes. And she's told Sasha that she's sorry. She's apologized. But that Sasha forgives her and that they understand that they are still best friends and that even though Bailey's made her mistakes, um, she is, again, all about showing her best friend that um, they were just accidents and that she did not mean to uh, do that to her. So uh, this is Bailey playing it up, and they are going to be in this next tag team match as it's Bailey and Sasha Banks going up against our newly formed team with Liv Morgan and Tony Storm, uh, our team here, and that is going to be a big tag team match. So this is Bailey hyping that up, heading into this big showdown with our newest women's tag team. And in a 68 overall, it is Liv and Tony here getting the win. I know we've got we've got to put in the name that Ben gave us for the for the tag team name. I don't know why that isn't showing up, but we have put that into our teams. Uh, but maybe we need to. I don't know if we actually actually saved that. We need to look at that though to make sure that's there. Uh, we've got to start using Ben's uh, team name here that we've got. Uh, but Tony Storm gets the win over Sasha Banks after Bailey accidentally takes out Sasha Banks yet again. So a big win for this duo here as they get a win over Bailey and Sasha. Uh, we see the great chemistry here and all that together. But a 68, a decent match. I mean, I don't know exactly what I expected just because these two are not that over. But... It is a significant win, and uh, I think one that was needed for this team in particular here as we look at this, and, I mean, it's a big win. But, of course, we know the bigger story is that how the win happened, and it wasn't just that Tony Storm pinned Sasha Banks. It's that Bailey accidentally hit Sasha yet again, 
And after the match, these two exit. They're celebrating their big victory. And it is Sasha Banks on the mat, looks up at Bailey with the total death stare. And then Sasha snaps and goes right after Bailey. A nice rating here, 69 overall. Could have been a little bit better, maybe. But Sasha has snapped. And she goes after Bailey. She's hauling off on her. We get a host of officials coming out to try to break things up. But that may have been the breaking point for Sasha Banks. She goes after Bailey and Bailey retreats. We've got the officials coming out. And this is just escalated now uh, to a point that I think a lot of people expected it to. But it has really gone into another gear here with Sasha Banks uh, seemingly losing it on Bailey for the final time, the final accident here for Bailey uh, with another botched uh, situation that causes another loss for Sasha Banks. So we'll see where this heads, but uh, I am I am very excited about where it's gonna what direction it's gonna go in. But uh, yes, that is that breaking point that I think a lot of people probably predicted uh, with this whole storyline we've had going on, but it's finally happened. Sasha snaps, goes after Bailey, 69 overall here for this one. And then it is Mustafa Ali um, with Pat McAfee and uh, Pat McAfee, our, our resident interviewer, <laughs> 68 overall. Uh, Ali says that he had Kevin Owens beat in the U.S. title match. And as we know, it was Owens getting sort of a flash pinfall to escape with the victory uh, and beating Ali in that one. And Ali says that he had Owens beat. Owens got lucky. And the nice thing about the U.S. title open challenge is that it is an open challenge. And Ali says, when Kevin Owens, the next time he issues an open challenge, he will be right there to accept it for the for the second straight time and that he is going to become the United States champion. I just remembered. I'm like, wait a second. Oh, yeah, that's the chemistry we got with Owens and Ali last week uh, on Raw. So this furthers the situation there involving uh, the whole storyline we've been building with Kevin Owens and uh, sort of starting to perhaps be a little bit run down by doing all these open challenge matches uh, and all of that. So Ali's saying that we haven't seen it yet, but he's actually going to step up and for the second time accept an open challenge, and he's just laying it on the table right now. So Ali essentially calling a shot that the next time Owens uh, issues an open challenge, he's going to be right there uh, to take advantage of it. So a decent little promo here from Ali. And now... It is Montez Ford getting, (laughs) yes, look at this. We are two for two for the Street Profits here. Montez Ford and Chad Gable have great chemistry. So this is another one we found. 67, not a bad match at all. 12-28, it is Montez Ford getting the win over Chad Gable with the Frog Splash. And uh, yeah, this is another uh, very (laughs) exciting, uh, you know, development here with great chemistry with these two. So yeah, we we are doing really well on this chemistry thing right now. Uh, with with Ford and Gable. Uh, Good little match here, 67. We've seen a lot of these sort of segments in a row here in the 60s, but that's okay. We kind of know we're going to have sort of a balance here, and like I said, pretty much the entire second half of the show is going to be all about the main event. Uh, So Ford gets the win, another victory for him, and uh, yeah, Montez Ford just keeps his momentum going uh, here as, you know, as he said, he talked with Daniel Bryan. He's still got unfinished business with Edge too, but it looks like Austin not too concerned perhaps about Montez Ford interfering in the main event. But uh, nonetheless, Ford gets the win over Gable. And here we go. This starts the, again, the entire second half of the show built around the main event. Cesaro says that this is the biggest match that he's had in his career. This is his opportunity to become the WWE champion and that for everything Edge has put him through, he is still standing right here as the top challenger and that he is going to come out a better man as the WWE champion. And that is what he's going to do in this match, is take what Edge values the most, and that is the championship. So Cesaro promo here, 73. This probably could have been a little bit better, but as I say, a lot of these angles had to be shortened because we had a lot to get to uh, in this. So could have done a little bit better there, but that's okay. So Cesaro hyping up his match with Edge, the biggest match of his career, And here we go. As we are going to do this in a similar sort of format as we did in Unforgiven, um, which is we start things off with not 
the actual match because we have some other stuff we need to get to with that. But the match gets started. It is Edge and Cesaro brawling in the ring. They are going at each other. Our WWE Championship match officially underway as uh, they are brawling. 89 overall here. Good stuff. Uh, and we've just got these two going right at it. We know the bad blood between them, the feud that's been built up to this point, and now they are going at it back and forth throughout the match, and there comes a point where Edge goes for the spear, Cesaro moves out of the way, and Cesaro capitalizes and gets ready to finish Edge off. Cesaro, all the momentum in his corner, the fans are behind him, they know that this is it. Cesaro is about to have his moment. He's about to become the WWE champion. He's got all the momentum here. Everything is in his advantage. And then, AJ Styles returns, hits the ring. Styles, wearing a black jacket, attacks Cesaro with a chair. Then, he turns his attention to Edge, and he hits Edge with a chair. So, Styles in the ring, takes out Cesaro with the chair. Edge is taken out with the chair. You know what that means. The referee calls for the bell. It is a draw. We've got a double DQ here as Edge is going to retain the WWE Championship in a draw. Both men are down. I know this is 76 overall. Probably could have been a little bit better, but uh, again, I think that probably has a lot to do with Edge's sort of, uh, uh, well, actually, no penalties here for Edge. So actually, I mean, actually did okay. I think Edge's stamina is not great. So I was wondering if that had to do with it. So a 76, it's okay. But now, afterwards, Edge and Cesaro both down. We've got a double DQ here. Cesaro's big moment taken away from him. And then here comes Randy Orton. And Sheamus coming out separately, obviously not together, (laughs) as Orton hits the ring, then Sheamus hits the ring, and Styles is standing on one side of the ring with a chair, both men a little hesitant, knowing that they don't want to necessarily go right after the guy who's swinging a chair. Uh, Edge and Cesaro are down, Randy Orton and Sheamus hit the ring, Styles is on one side with the chair, and it's basically set up as a two-on-one here, as Sheamus and Orton, even though they don't like each other, They probably want to keep their attention on the guy with the chair. Well, the crowd is buzzing. These two are seemingly getting ready to perhaps go after AJ Styles. But before that can happen, Finn Balor hits the ring and from behind attacks Sheamus with a chair of his own. So Balor hits Sheamus. So now Edge, Cesaro, and Sheamus are all down in the ring. Styles has his chair in one side. Balor's got the chair in another side. He's just taking out Sheamus. Meanwhile, Randy Orton is standing there looking around at all the destruction in the ring and wondering what in the hell is going on right now. But before Randy Orton can do anything, he stares at Balor, he stares at Styles, And then, from behind, it is Adam Cole who comes in with a chair of his own, and he attacks Randy Orton from behind with the chair. And now, in the three different corners here, we've got AJ Styles, Finn Balor, Adam Cole, all standing with chairs in their hand. And what do you know? All three of these guys are wearing black Jackets over their shirts. Nice rating here. And then AJ Styles drops the chair, holds up the two sweet sign. These three come together. They remove their jackets. And you probably know what is underneath those jackets. As AJ Styles now fully decked out in his Bullet Club memorabilia, his merchandise, all of that. He's got the elbow pads. He's got the t-shirt. All of that is there. And we remember, we go back to Unforgiven after he lost the match to Owens. He had been hyping up, saying that no one wanted what was going to come next if he lost that match to Owens. He did. He removed his elbow pads, all his phenomenal one stuff, and he basically left the ring 
with a very intent stare uh, as he walked out. And now we have perhaps seen the transformation of AJ Styles. And afterwards, we close it off. Styles, Balor, Cole, they are all in the ring as Edge and Cesaro are there in the ring with them. They've pushed out Orton and Sheamus. And Styles grabs the microphone and he says that he has been sitting around watching all of this unfold over the past several months. He's gotten his opportunities. He's always talked about how he wanted to prove that he still got it, but nobody believed him. Nobody believed that he still actually had it. And he said he couldn't. He had to prove to himself that he still had it. And when he lost that match and realized, you know, what he was doing was not working. It was not going to get him where he needed to go when he was losing those matches to Kevin Owens. So he had to do something about it. And he said he had to go back to what got him to WWE in the first place. He goes back to his roots and he is going back to his Bullet Club days and that his club is back. And he's got two with him right now, but he says they are not alone and they won't be alone for much longer. And then... Styles turns his attention to Edge and says, as Edge is just laying on the ground, taken out, Edge, here's the deal. He's watched Edge try to do his own little, you know, charade here, pulling off all the stunts he's pulled off with Randy Orton, trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes uh, by doing this whole big grand plan, this big scheme to have the rated RKO era back. And, And Styles says... Well, guess what? The rated RKO era means absolutely nothing to him, that they are just two people. Meanwhile, he's got two others with him. It's three on two. They've got the advantage. And then he looks at Cesaro and says that he thinks Cesaro is not better than him. And he's tired of sitting here listening to everyone saying that Cesaro is better than all of these other people. He's not better than AJ Styles. And so Styles said he had to go back to what got him to this in the very first place. This is what got him here, by having his own group. So while Edge can have Orton, Cesaro can have Sheamus, and all this other stuff, nothing will ever compare to his club. And he has got Cole, Balor, and now, he says again, they're not the only ones I've got. So everyone look around. He tells uh, everyone on Raw, everyone on SmackDown, everyone in NXT, He says, look around, because everywhere you look, there could be someone else that's already with us, and you just don't know it, because we are here to take over, and Styles says that's exactly what they're going to do. So, there you go. (laughs) That was uh, the big build. We've been kind of building to this for a little while now. In its truest form, the Bullet Club in WWE, uh, AJ Styles has reformed it, and he has essentially said that he is going to take over. 81 overall, we finished the show with a huge angle here. And uh, yeah, I mean, that this show, an 81, I didn't really know from a rating standpoint what it was going to get. Because again, when you look at what we did here, I mean, essentially, as I said, the entire second half is all built around Cesaro Edge. And then, of course, uh, the big angle with Styles, Cole, and Balor. Um, and you know, an 81. So we'll take that. It's perfectly fine. And we did have the Omos stuff on here and some of the other stuff just did not do great, but that's okay. Uh, this was something though, that was built around a big moment and, uh, we got it as now the stakes have been raised yet again on raw. And as we see, we've looked at the influx of talent we've had on raw here recently. There's a reason for that. And you'll start to see that play out over the next couple months. Uh, but raw's roster is now, Uh, something but the bigger story is we've essentially got a hostile takeover here with Styles, Balor, and Cole and uh, we'll see where that leads to. I did want to mention though one other thing. I know the champion the WWE title match goes to a a no contest here. You guys know probably from a lot of the matches I've booked as title matches. I don't really like doing that uh, but I will say that there's a reason I booked this on Raw and not a pay-per-view is because um, I I could convince myself that it was okay, <laughs> at least to do it occasionally on a TV show versus a pay per view. I just don't I don't have any desire necessarily to do that on a pay per view. Um, so I know we had that here, uh, but as you'll see, 
we're far from done with this whole scenario here. And now we've added yet another layer that only makes this title picture even what I, what I think is even more incredible right now when you think about all the different people we have kind of setting their sights on not just the, the, the championship, but at the very being at the very top of the company and especially on Raw. So there you go. There was Raw, uh, our, our big angle with AJ Styles, Finn Balor, Adam Cole. What a trio that is, but perhaps it's not going to be a trio for long. As Styles hinted, there is more to come uh, to join them. So we'll see. Who could that be? We will find out. All right, let's see what we need to get to before we wrap up. All right, so Raw, excellent uh, show here and uh, certainly a noteworthy one. Riddle, uh, as we talked about, we were not re-signing Riddle, and uh, we wish him all the best in the future. Shouldn't we be saying we wish him the best in his future endeavors? Isn't that the line that he uses? So Riddle's gone. We know that's because uh, Scandal and all that, and uh, we just couldn't re-sign him without uh, getting knocked for it. So we, we let him go, perhaps if that you know, is removed from him somehow, then we will perhaps look at bringing him back in the future. But for now, no riddle uh, on the show. Let's see, we've got new champions in New Japan. Evil and Sonata are the new tag champions. Uh, well, there you go. Um, not really a Bullet Club tie-in, but there you have it uh, on that. Uh, let's see, email-wise, uh, so Riddle's gone. Zack Sabre Jr. leaving Rev Pro. That's just because we have Zack Sabre Jr. Um, shortlisted. Drug test, ROG, it's a 3.87 uh, booking position available in NXT UK. I don't think we're going to take that, even though they are a company. Uh, we don't necessarily need that. So that is there. This is going to be, yep, it's Walter. So we are going to bring Walter back. We're not going to put him on the main roster. We're going to leave him in NXT UK for now. Um, okay, well, Walter doesn't want to be in NXT UK anymore. Well, Walter's getting too big. Well, here you go. Breaking news um, as we are going to put Ra- Walter in NXT. How about that? Um, there you go. So Walter's in NXT. Uh, that's another NXT uh, UK returnee there uh, that we're going to sign. So that was Raw. And um, like I said, that was uh, <laughs> the, the stakes have been raised on Raw as uh, AJ Styles returns with a vengeance. And uh, he has got a lot on his mind in terms of taking over Raw and perhaps the entire WWE. We'll find out on that. So Hope you enjoyed that episode. As always, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, on the next episode, it will be SmackDown week three in October. And uh, I, my schedule's kind of been a little all over the place in the past several weeks, the so holidays and all that stuff. So uh, we'll get back to doing these a little bit more frequently in terms of not having to wait. I know the last two episodes, SmackDown, you had to wait two weeks for that one. Raw, you've had to wait two weeks for this one. Uh, we'll get back to sort of our normal uh, frequency of, of releasing stuff and all that uh, moving forward. So just wanted to note that. You know, the holidays are just, my schedule's all over the place and yeah, work-wise and everything. So I uh, just want to let you guys know, always I love the feedback. You guys are just the best. And uh, again, hopefully you enjoyed this Raw. As uh, this, I said, I said, I said October is going to be wild for Raw. It's going to be a wild month. And three weeks in, I think you probably understood what I mean because it's been a very wild month on Raw. On the next episode, it will be SmackDown for week three in October.